Hello and welcome back to Repverb. On today's video we've got a NAD 3020 Series 20 amplifier that's got some issues with the sound, so let's get straight into it and do a quick test. So straight away with that quick demonstration, you can hear there's obviously issues with the control knobs. I would say with pretty much certainty that most of the issues will be down to the cleanliness of this unit. You can see that it's not in the best of conditions. There's quite a lot of rust and corrosion on it, especially on the back. So I'm presuming it hasn't been serviced in a long time. The controls obviously will be quite dirty. So we're going to open it up and straight away go in and clean them. So on this NAD amplifier or NAD, which I think it's supposed to be pronounced, um, there's three screws either side, so just need to remove them and then the lid can come off. So after a quick clean you can see that it's come up a lot better. You can obviously see straight away how dirty that was inside. Now I'm not sure whether it's just dust because it's almost like muddy sort of consistency but hard. Um, so I don't know whether it's just dust, it's, with, it's gone moisture, it's gone like hard on the surface, I don't know. So I've tried to remove as much as I can just doing it that way first just with a soft brush so you can see it's come up a lot better straight away. Now I'm just going to use some deoxit to clean the control pots, just spraying it inside. Um, there's small little holes which you'll see on the side of the potentiometers that you can just get it in and then work the knobs so it gets the deoxid all round and cleans it and then lubricates it again which should rectify I think most of these issues. Like I've said in previous videos that I've done it's surprising how much a good clean will rectify a lot of issues. Obviously again I'm not saying that it's going to solve everything but this would be the first place to look especially when you've got issues like this when you're turning the controls and it's cutting out or it's causing any sort of interference this is the first thing I would always do. And now after that quick clean I'm just going to give it a quick test just to see whether we've got rid of some of those issues. At this point I pressed the muting button which then caused some interference so I thought there might have been an issue of that not working correctly or some sort of dirt in there but as it happened and I messed around a bit more I noticed that it was the actual wire at the back which was causing the issue when that moved. <laughs> Thank you. 
So based on that quick test, obviously you can see that it's working a hell of a lot better than what it was previously, just doing that clean. But these connections at the back are quite corroded. So I'm just going to go over a little file just to clean them up so it gets a better connection because that's what was causing that issue on that test. After doing this, it should resolve the initial issues with the amplifier. Um, obviously it's not in the greatest conditions overall, but I spoke to the guy who owns this amplifier who just asked me to see if I could get it working okay. Um, and he said he'd like to do a recap on the whole system just to obviously prolong the life of it. No particular reason other than that, which I tend to agree with to be honest. I know a lot of people think that it's kind of pointless doing recaps for no reason, but I'm sort of a believer in thinking that it prolongs the life of it, um, you know, in case an uh, electrolytic capacitor does fail and it leaks on top of the circuit board, then, you know, this will prevent that hopefully, or well, for a long time anyway. Um, I've worked on sort of other systems, not stereos, um, some Sega systems and where they've actually had leaky capacitors and it turned into a right nightmare trying to repair that. So doing it this way, I, you know, I believe in that's the right way of doing it. Now moving on to the process of actually changing the capacitors. So I always source the capacitors individually rather than just buying a kit. I tend to think that you probably get a better quality doing it that way. Um, then I can choose the capacitors that I want to use rather than just going for like a pre-made kit. So I tend to use higher quality ones rather than cheaper ones just so they've obviously got a better life and they produce a better sound potentially. So I've shown the process on here of what's involved but it's a lot shorter. I've broken it down, I've cut a lot out just to sort of give an idea of what's involved but not take too long in the video. I've got another video of the NAD 3020 um, having a capacitor change which shows it a little bit more in depth than this. The capacitors I sourced from a guy on eBay, I've used him quite a few times, he sells a lot of decent stuff on there, he's very helpful so if anyone does want a link to those bits I can send that over. Um, so yeah he's, he's really good actually, really responsive to messages if ever there's anything that's been muddled up, um, which I've only had once to be fair, he'll sort it out um, and then send the correct ones out. Obviously when you do a capacitor change you need to make sure that everything's safe when you do it. You don't want to be working with the mains plugged into it and also you want to make sure that all the capacitors are discharged correctly and then just check that there's no voltage going through any of them before you obviously take them out. Um, you don't want to be touching anything which has got voltage for it because obviously it's very dangerous and you can cause harm to yourself. So you need to make sure that everything's safe um, and anything like this should only be carried out by someone who knows what they're doing to be honest. So as you can see from the video, you can see that I'm just working my way through them. So I removed the old capacitor first using the soldering iron and using the sucker tool to remove the solder from that area. And then once you've removed the old capacitor, you can then find the correct part um, to replace it and then re-solder that back in and then cut the legs off. Obviously you've got to make sure the capacitor is the right way round polarity wise, um, making sure the negative and the positive are in the right holes. You've got to make sure that obviously you're replacing that capacitor for the same capacitor that's just come out. I always do one for one, so take one out and replace it instead of doing a batch of them. Occasionally I might do a couple next to each other which are the same uh, rating, but I won't pull out a whole load of them and then replace unless I've got some sort of diagram or capacitor list that you can work from and you know that you're putting the right one in. So one of the capacitors did cause me a little bit of hassle. It had a 1000 UF 6.3 capacitor fitted in the muting circuit, which I replaced like for like, but when I went to turn it on, the muting circuit wasn't going off. So I looked at the diagrams, did a bit of research online, found some information from an ex-employee of NAD, who was a technician, who said that the three in that area should be 47 uh, UF 50 volt or 63 volt which I then replaced the one for a 47 UF 63 volt and the muting circuit worked fine and it switched off as it should and the sound came up. Apparently it was quite common for NAD to make on the fly changes so sometimes the changes wouldn't always be in the service manuals which obviously then makes it quite tricky when you're diagnosing stuff. So that's the capacitors all replaced. Now I'm going to put the lower panel back on which is held on by eight screws.
now that the actual main part of the unit is done I'm just going to try and tidy up the outside a little bit so I'm going to sand down the main shell lid and then give that a few coats of texture paint to try and replicate that original finish I did this on the last uh, NAD 3020 that I had which made it look a hell of a lot better um, especially on this one with the corrosion on it You can straight away now see what a difference it makes cleaning up the lid and giving it a few coats of texture paint. It just makes it look a hell of a lot better. The system now looks like a nice decent system from the outside. I did also give the interior of the system a little bit more of a clean um, after the capacitors were done just with a soft brush again but I used some electrical cleaner so sprayed that in there and just went round and tried to get off some of the harder stuff as much as I could. I didn't want to go too mad because I don't want to damage anything but I got off the bulk of it um, but again it's not mint but it's a lot better than what it was considerably better than what it was when I originally took it apart and cleaned it up you can see here now with the lid and the front panel cleaned up the system will look great anywhere in the home now it won't look like a messy system just sat there um, deteriorating but now I'm also gonna clean up the back part and just touch in the back area with the black paint now with this I would have stripped it all down but because there's parts that have been riveted in I would have caused more damage trying to take it out than what I do just brush painting it and just tidying it up and making it look a little bit more presentable. Providing it isn't used in a damp area this should then hold back the corrosion for a bit longer. Now we're coming near the end of this refurb so you can see that it's come out really well I'm really happy of how it's come out actually. Um, it's just a nice little system and it's preserved it again for years to come rather than just chucking it away and replacing it with another unit. This one's got a new lease of life now. So the guy collected it, he was very happy with it and he's left me with another NAD 3020 to have a look at which is just mainly I think needs a service so that will also be coming up again soon. But he did also briefly mention potentially changing the cap so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So now that we've got the system all back together we can now test it and make sure that it sounds good. So after all that, it works great, it looks great, now it's ready to take pride of place in the home. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, it's really appreciated, I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe for many videos like this, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>